Hey everybody, Todd Bettenhausen here once again with a follow-on to my input lag testing for this NEC NPV260X projector. It's a 1024 by 768 DLP projector and I'll explain why I chose that projector here in a minute. But I've gone off and made the mistake that I often make when I make these YouTube videos. I usually assume that everybody who sees these videos can see what I write in the iRacing hardware forum, which is a private community. So I'm going to try to do a little bit better job explaining what I'm up to here. Um, I am going to a three projector racing uh, three projector racing cockpit setup for for all my sim racing which is done only in iRacing.com and the reason I'm doing this is I want to see more of the inside of the car. Right now my FOV in iRacing is set to 60 degrees and with three projectors and a wraparound configuration of 179 degrees which is of course halfway around or out to the side of your eyeballs directly which is as wide as iRacing goes, you can see how much of the inside of the car um, you can see now. You can see the bottom edge of the instrument panel. That's really cool. And the mirror, the uh, actual sim generated rear view mirror is going to show up in all the cars. So I'm really in pursuit of opening up my cockpit because when you position your displays, whether they be monitors or projectors, at a distance where everything is true size that it would be in real life, these bigger screens get you more open area in your cockpit. You're not all squeezed in there. You're not trying to figure out where to put your wheel, you know, between you and your center display. And that's another big thing here that I'm trying to do. You know, I want that wheel to be floating out in front. I want that to be the only thing between me and my controls, is the body of that wheel. I don't want any computer stuff around, no keyboards, no mice, no button boxes. Just that little re I believe it's an N7 wireless keyboard and that thing um, I'll probably velcro it to my seat belt and just grab it whenever I uh, you know whenever I need to use it and the reason I'm putting belts in my cockpit is I am using an Ultra Force GS4 uh, G seat it has panels in it that simulate motion and you get a better sensation when you're bolted in also I'm a notorious leaner <laughs> so hopefully it'll calm me down in the cockpit a little bit and and make me not only a little bit more consistent but also get me a uh, better more consistent feedback so I hope this works I've got three of these projectors now the other two came in yesterday I've only opened one here's my iRacing PC it's got an ATI 70 or AMD showing my age here an AMD 7970 GPU in it I've got a set of Canon F1 pedals connected just so the sim doesn't complain and right now our throw distance is about what I'm after in my cockpit this is going to be rear projection so I have the projected material already. I got it from a place called Carl's Place on eBay. I bought enough to do all three in one seamless piece for $60 and it looks like it has a lot of potential. And actually I'm going to come up and I don't know how close this camera will focus but at that 69 inch throw distance this is a, a almost a 45 degree or I mean a 45 inch diagonal image which means it's about three feet across. And the reason I'm choosing three feet is because I'm building the screen frame out of 8020 and that's a convenient size that allows my cockpit to be really really opened up. I may give some thought to, to tightening the whole thing up because there's plenty of room to do it. It kind of depends on how when I model this thing out in SolidWorks. Um, there are going to be two sub-assemblies. The cockpit sub-assembly is just going to hold the steering wheel, the pedals, the shifters if present, and of course the UltraForce G-Seat and nothing else to interfere because we want to see a lot of the inside of this car when I'm driving. The other part of the the whole picture is going to be a one piece screen frame that has projector mounts and all three screens and of course the projection material on the front side of it. So we're going to go ahead and get ready to do some input lag testing and this camera that I'm using is uh, an older Sony bloggy camcorder. It's something that I kind of dusted off. It It went overseas with me for two years ago and I haven't touched it since then but it's ideal for this because it records in 720p at 60 frames per second and we just did the math 60 frames per second is just under 17 milliseconds and when you work all that out a car travels about 4.9 feet in one sixtieth of a second. Now, I know the old 120 hertz argument, I just can't afford to do it, I'd love to, but I've got to start somewhere and hopefully these laser hybrid projectors will come on the scene in a couple years from now they'll be cheaper and, and 
I can make that, adva that advancement. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and put the camera on this tripod here. It's all lined up. I've done a little visual enhancement here. I've got some tape on the wheel now, and I've, I've chosen the Nationwide car, which has a yellow tape on the wheels, so we can get a good look at it. And if I can't find a, uh, some sort of editing software that allows me to send the slow motion video up to YouTube, encode it in slow motion and send it, and I'd appreciate any help with that you guys out there can offer, I'll go ahead and count the frames of input lag. Actually, I prefer to think of it as output lag because the display outputs behind your inputs to the controls. But input lag seems to have stuck, so we'll go with that. I'll count the frames, and we'll see um, we'll see how, how laggy this whole setup is. So as soon as I put this on the tripod, Carrie's going to get the room lights for me. And we'll jerk the wheel a couple times, and then we'll, uh, we'll look at it frame by frame, and I'll go into YouTube and, and make a comment about what I see here. And I'm not much into editing, so forgive the sloppiness here, but hey, I do all this stuff in one take. I'm not a videographer. I'm a sim racer. I'm not very good at either right now. Okay, Carrie, go ahead and get the lights. I'm going to go ahead and zoom in a little bit. So we can see that critical area where those two pieces of tape, the one on the screen and the one on the wheel, are darn near lined up. And if we can't count the frames there, I'd, I don't know how to do much more objective of a test than this. Keep in mind, this is the sum of everything. Um, if iRacing has a, a one frame lag in it built in compared to R-Factor, for instance, which I've been told by, by Neil's a very knowledgeable person, I'm sure most of you know him, um, we have to kind of build that one frame in. Another thing I wanted to mention is I've got a SIG, that's S-I-I-G, display port to HDMI adapter in the in the video chain now. Um, this card has four full-size display port outs on it and two HDMIs, a single link and a dual link. My setup's going to be um, center monitor, which we have here, connected to a full-size display port via this SIG active adapter. That's important. And active display port to HDMI adapters used to be pretty difficult to find apparently, but SIG sells this. It was about 40 bucks and and I want to see if there's any, any input lag generated by the active adapter also, which is why I've set up my entire center screen um, equipment chain here. So I'm going to sneak over there, and I'm going to jerk on the wheel a couple times, and then I'm going to sign off, and I'm going to go right about it. Here we go. And one thing on Belgian sim racers that was brought up was whether or not these projectors get smudgy. And I can see every frame. When that yellow piece of tape shoots to the right, I can see every frame. I mean, this thing is, is clear. So I'm very pleased. If the lag's manageable, then I think we're good to go. Do it a couple more times. That's as fast as I can accelerate it. I've got the force feedback turned off. A little slower one there at the end in case that works better. And Wow, that's so nice. Look how much of the inside of the car you can see. The bottom of the instrument panel, I've never seen that before while racing. So these three 4 to 3 displays will have a combined aspect ratio of 4 to 1. If I had three 16 to 9 displays wrapping around me to that same 180 degree point, I'd have 5.33 to 1. So I know 1024 by 768 sounds like low resolution, but practically speaking, I'm only going from 1080 to 768 vertical. I'm still, you know, more more resolution than than 720p vertically. And I just don't think it's going to be too much of a problem. Especially it seems like AMD reduced a or I mean, uh, here we go again. AMD released a beta driver today for uh, for the iFinity 7000 series cards that apparently solves some artifacting problems. That's what's reported in the iRacing forums today. So if I can get that anti-aliasing squared away, and that's another little tip for you uh, AMD iFinity guys. If you've got one of these higher end 7000 series cards, go ahead and try 2x super sampled anti-aliasing. Turn it off in the sim and turn it on in Catalyst Control Center, and that annoying shimmering that you see in the grandstands, kind of a moiré pattern, all that stuff goes away, and if your system can run it, it really, really helps the immersion. It makes the sim look a lot more realistic. And that's another benefit here of this system. Uh, that I'm putting together. Um, it's only about about 
three megapixels. So it's a uh, it's going to be a lot easier on the hardware. It's it's just over half the pixels I had before. So we should be really uh, good to go with a lot of eye candy. So let's go ahead and write about it and and measure this output lag and see how it turns out. See you guys in the comments and see you next time with the video. So long.